G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop. And I haven't got my apron on. And the reason for that is I'm taking a week off of doing the plate rack and going to share a video with you I put up at the beginning of the year or part of a video I put up at the beginning of the year and it covers hand planes. I have had so many emails since I flattened that last board in the last episode or part two of the plate rack that I decided I'd share the video on how to set planes up. It covers how to make a hogging plane, how to use a, a plane blade for smoothing and also how to make a shooting um, plane blade. It's all using number fours of which I bought on eBay and I think they cost me about 20 bucks each. So you don't need a lot of money, but you do need patience, you do need a bit of time, and you do need to really want to know how to use them. And then the rest of it comes quite easily. In front of me, I've got the range of planes that I use from a number one to a number eight. The one that's missing here is a four and a half, but I very seldom use it and it's actually on a bench over there. And of course, block planes, I use those a lot. So as a response, to the emails I've received, I will do a couple of videos on how to set each plane up and how to use them and get the most out of them and to maintain them. Now, for the planes I have in front of me, there are, I think, uh, there's one plane maker that does make a number one. I don't think anyone's making number eights anymore, but the most common planes now are a number seven, a number five, a number four, and that's about it. Of all of these planes in front of me, I think the number seven I find the most useful. The one I use a lot of is a five and a quarter. And again, there's another plane maker that makes those. But search the auction channel, search the uh, garage sales, and I'm sure you'll come up with some. So until we meet again and I continue the plate rack, which is sitting right here next to me, I'll pull the shed door down on this little intro and say remember to keep it sharp but keep it safe enjoy your woodwork be nice to each other and enjoy this little video or part of a video that i uploaded earlier this year i'll see you in part three of making the plate rack very very soon bye for now Those of you that have seen a lot of my videos and my shows know that I've got quite a nice selection of planes. However, for this one, I just want to show you how easy it is to plane and you don't need expensive, exotic planes or a range of planes like I have. So, if you've only got a number four Stanley, I will use the most popular and the most common one. And that is Stanley number four. This one's got a plastic handle, so really collectors aren't all that interested in picking them up, and you can generally pick them up for under $30, plus postage and handling, off any of the auction sites. Now I've got three planes here, and the reason for that is I'm going to show you three different plane blades. You can just use one plane and change the blades. I wouldn't recommend that you shape the blade every time you want to use a different blade though. The three different blades I'm going to use Uh, one, for actually flattening the board and getting these undulations out. And then one for smoothing it nice and flat. And the other one I'll just show you as a normal planing blade. Now, to flatten this, what I would normally use would be if I was going to do it by hand and there's a lot of difference in height of the timber, I'd actually use a scrub plane. Now, this is a scrub plane. I believe uh, the Stanley model is a 40, and I think you can get a 40 and a half. This one's actually a Veritas. But if you look at that blade, you can see that, let's get something straight. You can see that it's got a fair curve in it. And when that cuts, 
that really removes a lot of material. But because I said I was going to show you an easier way, you can just have a look. So I can get that without the light. Have a look at how aggressive that blade can be as opposed to a straight one. But if you don't want to go to the expense of buying a scrub plane, what you can do is pick one of these uh, number fours up that you can pick up, as I said, most auction sites, garage sales, auctions. And when you get the blade, the blade would be flat like that. Put this down here. So that's nice and flat to the timber. What I do is grind it just on an ordinary grinding wheel. And if you can see that, it's got quite a curve in it. Now that isn't as severe as a scrub plane, but believe me, it'll hog out a lot of material. So what I call that is a hogging blade. Then the other blade that I use for smoothing, right on the very corners of the blade, I've rounded it off. To really exaggerate it, it's actually rounded on the corners but this part of the blade remains dead flat. And what I'll do is I'll show you the difference when we actually start smoothing this plane. A lot of people ask me how I sharpen blades. Well, look, there's as many ways to sharpen as there are blades, I'm sure. My particular preference is I use an oil stone. I do have the machines uh, that do hollow grinds and flat grind, grinds, and there are a lot of those on the market. But generally when I'm working, just to brighten my tool up or to give it uh, a secondary bevel, I use an oil stone. And I'll show you how I use mine. Okay, this is just a little box I made up ages ago. It's got a Norton stone. I don't really know what the grit is. I think they termed it as fine and it works absolutely wonderfully. You can get coarse ones, but the one I bought was fine. Another little trick, if you're going to use um, a wooden stand like this, what you can do is get some small brads or little nails and you just nail them into the edge on the underside of your box and then when you put it on your bench you push down and that will then stay there and I push that it won't move. So what you do is put little nails in there, snip them off with a pair of snips and it's a nice little bench hold all device if you like. Generally, when I do my first secondary bevel, which is at 30 degrees, I use one of these honing guides. There are a lot on the market. Um, this happens to be an eclipse. I've had it for about 30 years and it works fine. There are others that seem quite complicated and there are copies of these that, again, um, I haven't used, but I'm sure they work quite well. Now, how it works is the protrusion of the blade from the mouth of the honing guide will denote what angle you're going to get. Nearly always I have a 30 degree secondary angle. So the first time I put that on, I actually use a honing guide. And after that, I just do it by hand, which I can show you later on. But I think it's important the first time to make sure you get it right. And then you just progressively work on that angle. So to get the right angle on the side it's actually got if I want a 30 degree angle on this plane blade I have to have a 38 millimeter protrusion from the mouth. Now if I was using a chisel which actually I'll get a chisel. Here's a chisel. Which you actually use the bottom mouth for to get a 30 degree put in the right way that'll help to get a 30 degree secondary bevel, the protrusion is only 30 millimetres. So remember to read what the sizes are, whether you're using the top gate or the bottom gate. In this case, it's a plain blade, so I want 38 mil. Now, instead of measuring all the time, as I used to, after a while I got sick of that, so I made this little jig up. Very, very basic. All it is, is a piece of timber that's 38 mil wide with a stop on it. Now on there, I don't know if you can read, but I've got 30 degree secondary bevel plane. And I actually made this in January 
the 28th, 1999. So as you can see, they don't wear out. All I have to do now is just nip that blade up a little bit, put the edge of the jig up against the honing guide and just move it in so the honing guide comes up to the edge. Nip up the side bit. Locking caps make good screwdrivers. And there we go. Now, a little bit of um, Kero is what I use. You can use light machine oil or whatever, but kerosene seems to work for me. And then I do three, not a lot of pressure. Not a lot of pressure, just medium pressure. And you should feel a very slight wire on the bottom with your fingers, which I can, all the way across. Then you just take that wire off. Another problem people have with sharpening, I've noticed, is they do this. And the hands are moving. What that does, if you're going freehand, every time you do it like that, you tend to be rolling the blade. So if you can get into the habit of bending at the waist, and it's just on the knees. And I do two, knock off that wire, and then one. Knock off the wire. That should be nice and smooth under there. I'll just test it on a bit of paper. Pretty sure it's going to be good. There's a bit of paper. Pretty sharp. And that's how your tool should be. That sharp, so they just cut like that. All right, now we'll just fit that into the blade. Or fit the blade into the plane. And again, with the cap iron, which is this little curly bit, let's make sure that it's, that one's not, that it's nice and flat and there's no um, rust or anything else on there. A little bit of rust on there, actually. I'll just knock that off. It's good doing it live, isn't it? Okay, there we go. Now, I have mine protruding about 3 seconds of an inch. I'm sorry, I don't know what the metric of that is, but um, it'd be a tad under half a mil, I would imagine. That's because this is a smoothing plane and I want to take a very small amount off. So I just have the blade protruding a little bit. I doubt if you can even pick that up on camera. And again, is the locking iron to tighten it up. Then you just have a look for yourself. And yep, that looks pretty good. I'll just drop it into a plane. Get a bit of timber and we'll try it out. Once the blade's been fitted, then you've just got to line up the blade to make sure that it's parallel to the mouth. And that's what you use this lever here for. It's called a lateral lever. If I move it this way, what that actually will do then will expose this corner of the blade. If I move it the other way, this corner will be exposed. So what we want to do, what we're aiming for is to get a nice, even amount of blade coming out at the mouth. And if you sight down there into some light, or the sunlight, just so the same amount coming up on both sides as it appears to be. A little bit of scrap timber here. We'll just see how we go. Follow my own advice and use some water. For the youth that don't know, if you spray a little bit of water in your vise, it adds as a brilliant way of holding something tight in your vise. It's very cost effective. Now we've got to read the grain. In this case, it's going from this side up there. 
So I'll put that in the vise and I will plane that way. So I'm actually planing uphill. Grab hold of the plane. Now I hold the plane by the handle and I have my index finger pointing in the way I want to plane. And then depends, sometimes I'll hold the underneath of the sole, underneath my fingertips and thumb pressure on the top. Or well, sometimes I have the knob between two fingers with thumb pressure like that. Really, it's horses for courses. Whatever you're comfortable with is going to work. Before we start, good practice to get into. Even if you're doing a, a quick, you know, test plane as we're doing, a little bit of candle wax on the sole of the plane really helps the plane to slip. There you go. And you can hear it. 